These scrolls provide the most compelling evidence we have that God's Word has remained unchanged. They link our spiritual history to a God that has preserved His Word and His people through His holy language. I find that to be a very powerful experience, and it's become much more significant since I've had kids, where you realize how important the roots that you carry are. To wrap up my linguistic journey, I went to meet Oren Abelman. Good to Hi. see you. Good to see you too. Let's go in. Let's go. To learn about arguably the most significant discovery in the world when it comes to the Hebrew language and the Bible. Welcome to the Dead Sea Scrolls Conservation Lab. This is the only lab in the world which treats the Dead Sea Scrolls and makes sure that they don't deteriorate any more than they already had. We have the largest collection of scrolls in the world. About 97% of the scrolls that there are are taken care of here. Most of what we're looking at is more or less 2,000 years old. Every single book of the Bible, with the exception of the Scroll of Esther, was found in Dead Sea Scrolls. People might not know that there's sort of a black hole when it comes to the written archives. Things that go back this far are not very common. Yeah, no, the, I mean, as far as biblical texts, these are the most ancient manuscripts of the Bible that were found. So, Olin, can we see what's uh, hidden underneath uh, the paper? I'm not authorized to touch these things. Really? You, the expert, are not allowed to touch I'm not allowed to touch this. Because and what, they're so sensitive? Or? They are extremely sensitive. The Dead Sea Scrolls were first discovered in 1946 by a Bedouin shepherd who wandered into a cave in Qumran near the Dead Sea. It didn't take long for archaeologists to latch onto their importance. And in the years that followed, more and more scrolls were found in nearby caves in the caves of Qumran. There was this distinct community there that it seems hid their, some of their manuscripts in these specific caves, and it was a unique collection. After that, the earliest other manuscripts that you have of the Bible, in Hebrew at least, are you got to the cry of which is a thousand years later. So that's um, very substantial. Yeah. So we have here mm -hmm. is 11Q1, uh, the Paleo-Leviticus scroll. See, this isn't the Hebrew script we know from today. This is ancient Hebrew. This is ancient Hebrew the, from the first temple period. Mm -hmm. But this scroll is not from the first temple period. This scroll is from the second temple period. So we're, we're looking at a scroll that is 2,000 years old, that has a text that is almost 3,000 years old in it. Or even more than 3,000 years old. That's, uh, it's, uh, the text is basically identical mm -hmm. to what we have in uh, Leviticus today. What, just different letters? Um, the, just the script itself is okay. different. The differences that there are are relatively minor. People today might have a problem reading I do. I, I have no <laughs> idea what it says. However, the other one... This, well, this looks read. familiar. Try to read here. Shir ha-ma'alot le-David, hine matov uma na'im. Okay, so it's very familiar. Shevet achim gam yachad. Yes, and we actually have it in a modern-day Bible, mm -hmm. um, Psalms 133. Mm -hmm. And you can read it here also in Hebrew. Shir ha-ma'alot le-David, hine matov uma na'im, shevet achim gam yachad. So same thing, this is 2,000 years old. old yes. This was printed this decade, and it's exactly the same text. Yeah. That's incredible. These scrolls provide the most compelling evidence we have that God's Word has remained unchanged. They link our spiritual history to a God that has preserved His Word and His people through His holy language. For me, seeing something like this, it, it does something inside. There are very few people who can read their own ancient texts in this way. Um, Definitely 2,000 years old. Yeah. This is part of my heritage that I grew up with. Sometimes when I open a certain prayer that you have here in the scrolls, and it's sometimes it's the same exact prayer that I say in my daily prayers uh, as well. I, I find that to be a very powerful experience, and it's become much more significant since I've had kids, where you realize how important the roots that you carry are. Shalom from Jerusalem. Today we have a special guest, Dr. Ray Pritz. Dr. Ray Pritz is a specialist in the Hebrew language, was involved in the translation of the New Testament from Greek to modern Hebrew. Ray, shalom and welcome to our show. Shalom. You talk about the Hebrew translation of the New Testament. Yeah, the, uh, actually the New Testament has been translated into Hebrew or parts of the New Testament probably 70 or 80 times. Uh, oh. over, the, over the centuries. 
We have evidence in some of the church fathers that some of our gospels were originally done in Hebrew. Interesting. Somehow underlying the Greek, uh, there is Hebrew influence. How did they get to that conclusion? Because they didn't find the source. The conclusion is not too difficult to reach in the gospels uh, when you see the uh, structure of the language. Mm -hmm. uh, Greek has its structure as every language does, but you have elements in the New Testament that are clearly not Greek elements. For example, uh, biblical Hebrew, most sentences start with a word which we would translate and, but it doesn't really mean anything. It's just a uh, grammatical device to goes attached mm -hmm. to the verb and uh, to say this is what's happening. You can go through long sections of the Gospels. It really stands out in uh, Luke. And uh, every sentence starts with the word kai, which is the Greek word for and. Interesting, very interesting. And Ray, as we speak, you're working on a beautiful project, which is a, a translation of the Hebrew scriptures into modern Hebrew from Old Testament, ancient Hebrew mm -hmm. into modern Hebrew. First of all, I'm sure the project is debatable. And second of all, I'm sure it's very interesting. Uh, right on both counts. Surveys have been done recently within the last less than 10 years of the secular Israelis, 90% do not ever read the Bible. Uh, they, they study the Bible in, in school, school, high school, school, and that's it. In school, right. And then they leave. Um, and if you ask the question, well, why not? I think for that is that it's hard for them to understand. It's not fun. It's much easier to read a novel. We uh, decided that we needed to do a modern Hebrew translation of the Hebrew scriptures. And uh, the first thing we did was a survey because everyone said, don't waste your time, don't waste your money. Everybody will be against it because it's the holy book. And so we commissioned a professional survey. It wasn't our own. We hired a, a company mm -hmm. that does that. And when we asked that question, 50% of the people who answered were in favor of a modern Hebrew translation. And even more uh, significant for Mishmulik, when 30% of the people said they would read the Bible more hmm. if they had a modern Hebrew translation. We began about two years ago to do a modern Hebrew translation of the uh, Hebrew scriptures. How fast does it go? Well, about three weeks ago, we finished the full draft of all of the Old Testament. Ah, oh, beautiful. In Bible translation terms, that's unheard of to be so quick. And the reason is that our translators are all native Hebrew speakers. But there are sections that they don't have to change hardly anything, and they can move along fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. And so we have a full draft now. We estimate to be finishing and printing the book in about two more years, mm -hmm. two, two and a half more years. Uh, and I look very much forward to that happening. Ray, thank you. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani, and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions and comments below. And invite your friends to join the conversation.